you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for SmartZone Controller based on high scale deployment of the 5.2 SmartZone release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, I will provide a demonstration on configuring zones and their purpose within SmartZone. So let's get started. I have already logged into the SmartZone instance using a Super Admin account. We can observe that it's a high scale instance and it is 5.2 SmartZone release. Under the grouping in the middle, we see there are a few partner domains and subdomains already configured. So let's talk about the purpose of an AP zone. An AP zone functions in a way of grouping a ruckus APs and applying a particular set of configurations to that group. Multiple zones can be configured under any domain, providing different sets of configuration preferences based on the environment these APs will be placed. Since partner domains and subdomains are already configured on this smart zone instance, we can now create zones within these domains. Zones are managed under the Access Points tab and are associated with a domain. Regardless if it is a system domain, partner domain, or a subdomain, zones can be configured under them, allowing you to place APs within them with similar duties. I will create zones in various places within this smart zone instance under different domains to show you how their hierarchical nature allows for organized deployments of APs. Similar with domains, we select the domain we would like to create the zone and press the plus in the upper left hand corner. This results in a create group window to appear where we can name and select zone under the group type. Once it is selected, there are many additional options that appear that can be configured for this specific zone. As I scroll through the options, any one of these settings can be adjusted and applied to APs that are placed within this zone. If nothing is changed within this zone configurations, then the default settings will be applied to its AP members. There are a few fields that are required to be changed before this zone can be saved. These are the name of the group, the AP firmware, which happens to be set at the default AP firmware of the system, but can be changed if other AP firmware versions have been uploaded to this controller. You will see them as options here as well if they are. The last mandatory setting is the AP admin login credentials. This requirement ensures that any AP members will not have their CLI access remain in the default credentials, but is changed to the preference within the zone. After the mandatory settings have been configured, you can go through and make any other changes that you prefer in this zone. Any changes made will be reflected on the APs that join or been migrated to this zone. Once these mandatory settings and optional settings have been completed, you can press the OK to establish the zone. I just showed a zone being configured in a subdomain, but it is no different when configuring in a system or partner domain as well. Simply select the domain you would like the zone to reside in and click on the plus in the upper left. If at any time you would like to adjust the zone settings, you can select the zone and make your changes by clicking on the pencil icon. Do know that any changes made will be reflected on its AP members once the zone is saved. Therefore, it is important to be careful when changes are made on an existing production zone because of this. Once these zones are configured, you can click on them and see the configuration that was applied. Any APs that are added to this zone will inherit these zone values, which will also include any wireless LANs that are applied to it as well. We demonstrate creating wireless LANs within a zone in another video in this series. Thank you for taking time to view this demonstration.